Hey guys, how's it going? Dan here for Prompt Hub. We've got some super actionable tips for you today, focusing on principles that you can take into 2024 to add to your prompt testing toolkit. So looking back briefly, you know, 2023 was obviously a huge year for AI in general, with the launch of ChatGPT. Um, it was actually at the end of 2022, but it was really in 23 where things started to mature. <clears throat> We're seeing a lot of best practices develop in prompt engineering. A few shot learning, chain of thought reasoning. We're learning a lot more of how to actually get better responses from LLMs, from specific instruction methods like a motion prompt, you know, this take a deep breath chain of thought reasoning. There's a lot that has kind of emerged over the last year. And just at the end of last year, there's this very interesting paper um, titled Principled Instructions are All You Need. And it was basically just a mega list of a bunch of principles, 26. Um, prompting principles that these researchers decide to test and see how they did in terms of increasing output and output quality and output correctness. And so we dug deep into it um, to try and find which principles were best, um, analyzing how the experiments were run, the data sets and everything. And so we're here to kind of bring that to you today. In general, they broke down the principles into five different categories. So I find these categories helpful as a starting place to kind of find and orient yourself in terms of what your use case is. Um, so if you have a, you know, if you're doing content creation, um, you know, specificity and information is the category you probably want to go to um, and so on and so forth. And so the, you know, that list that we looked at before, is just kind of a, it's in, directly in the research paper, it's 26 principles. Um, and then they later on go to show you how much each principle affected the baseline prompt. Um, what we did is we combined those into a single table with the category, the principle, and the improvement and correctness percentage increases. And so that's available um, via our Substack. So if you just drop your email in, you'll get a link to a Google Sheet that has all of that for GPT 3.5 and 4. So it's broken down by model. Um, to account for the different percentage increases um, that they found through the experiments. So that's free to access. You can get that just through our Substack. We're gonna look at a few examples. Uh, we're not gonna run through all 26, but we're gonna check out a few that kind of stuck out to us that we thought were interesting. So the first being principle four, um, basically tell the model what to do, not what not to do. And this was something OpenAI acknowledged in their first round of prompt engineering principles that they launched. Um, and their most recent update of best practices actually wasn't listed. And so that's why I kind of caught my eye. I do think based on our experience and our experience working with teams at Prompt Hub, the more you can be specific about what you actually wanted to do versus trying to cram in, hey, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. We've seen better performance that way. But on the flip side, we have seen the um, you know use of negative language is actually helpful in maybe avoiding certain things. So it's kind of two edges of the same sword, I would say. Um, principle 12, yeah, chain of thought reasoning has been around for a while. And if you're doing any sort of logical reasoning, complex task, having some sort of way to instruct the model to think step by step, take a deep breath, um, you know, print out its thoughts in thoughts tags um, that you could then kind of later on strip out from the response, allowing the model to generate the tokens to explain its reasoning process usually helps it get to a better end result. I thought this one was really interesting. It's basically helping the model help you. Um, so allowing it to get precise details and requirements from you by asking questions so that has enough information um, to give you an output. So this is obviously tailored much more towards chat or conversation experiences, um, but it's really just building up proper context for the model. So you don't have to do it all in one go. And then the model can keep asking questions until it has what it thinks all it needs to complete the task. And again, we think this is a really helpful way if you're going to be building any sort of chat experience, having this happen, you know, in the back end or in the front end can lead to better results. And the last one, Two words but it is super powerful um, using delimiters and just kind of breaking up your prompt um, to be more structured is a great way um, not only to get better outputs but makes it easier for your team and whoever you're working with to understand um, at a glance what the prompt is doing the different parts 
Um, so breaking it up by you know instructions and then demonstrations and then if you actually have a, a specific question, um, these are all really good ways to, again, it's good prompt hygiene and you'll get better outputs. And there's a few examples of these in our recent blog posts, which I'll link below um, from us, where we um, got the system message from a couple of AI companies, OpenAI, Perplexity, etc. And in almost all of them, um, you'll see it's, they're very structured using headings and delimiters. So there's are some real world examples for you. Some examples from this study, um, essentially how it worked was that they took a baseline prompt from a data system in the Atlas data set, and then they added the, they ran that, and then they added the principle and saw how it performed. So you can see in this use case, this first prompt is just the baseline, and then the second time, you know, they gets a wrong um, answer here, and then the second one is they add in some few shot um, examples to have help the model learn in context, and it's able to correctly get the answer in this case. One thing I will note is that the baseline prompts in some cases are, are really kind of thin, um, and so adding principles on top of them is kind of like a no-brainer that it will do better. Um, I still think there's a lot you can, can glean from it. Here's another example of using FewShot uh, for counting words. Um, these models have notoriously been like not super great in math, so especially in cases where we're doing math, few shot and chain of thought of reasoning goes a far away. So the experiments were set up to judge um, two metrics basically. So all the evaluations were done by humans. Um, they would judge the, you know, for boosting, they would judge the quality of the response before and after on some scale. And for correctness, they would determine if it was accurate, relevant and free of errors. So they judged on these two metrics of before and after. Overall, 50% um, improvement um, across responses for on the boosting um, metric. And for correctness, 20% on the smaller models, 50% for larger. They tested a wide range of models, which we'll dig into a little bit more. So we're looking at all the principles and looking at that boosting metric of just general improvement. Um, you could see kind of the results laid out here. Um, overall, you're seeing bigger improvements for larger models. Um, the models are, are, you know, the GPT-4s and 3.5s of the world. You'll see a couple of spikes. You'll see a spike around 14, which we took a lot, look at before, 26. Um, and this is where that table we put together, I think, becomes really helpful. Um, so you don't have to kind of keep going back and forth between, oh, what was that principle? Which one was that? So I would just check that out. Um, again, I think the most interesting thing here is again, seeing the improvement on the, the large scale models is, is much, much higher for the correctness percentage as well. So here's a list of all the models they looked at. Um, you can, again, you could see kind of what we've just been saying, the larger the model, the bigger improvements the principles have on average. And then here is the heat map, which we have combined into a single table, but I think it's interesting to look at kind of in this way as well, you see principle 14, um, you know, so the darker the square here, the better. Principle 14 does really well across the board. Um, and you can see there's a couple other principles that stuck out that performed pretty well for certain specific models. And then here again, you see GPT-4 is able to make the most uh, by far uh, on average of the principles and is able to improve the most with just a little bit of prompt engineering. So again, now that you're a little bit more ori oriented, um, you know, you'll be able to see the principles, the improvement percentages, the correctness percentages, the categories, um, and we did it for both 3.5 and 4, and you can access that just from promptup.substack.com, drop your email in, and it will get sent to you, and then you'll have access to the Google Sheet, and you can filter it, copy the data, whatever it might be, and happy prompting. Let me know if you have any questions.